early, and I know you're early because the clock up there is right. <laughs> you are, her clock is right. You're with her. You're with her? And two women against one guy, we know what that means. <laughs> Eating, in our prayers, we will remember um, Helen Kriedemeyer. Uh, Helen's son, Ken, passed away um, on last Saturday, and, or maybe it was last Friday. And his funeral is going to be um, Saturday morning. And so, um, this is the second son that she has lost, as well as her husband. And so, Helen has been put through a lot, so we'll ask a special blessing. One hell out of the family. Let us please begin with prayer. Gracious Father, as we are privileged to come before you, we ask once again that you would enlighten your heart and bless our souls and grant to us the gift of your spirit so that all that we do, we understand the hope in which we live and the blessing that you have provided to us. And so we ask that you would guide what we do this night to once again give praise to your name as we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.
of Psalm 67, we do read these verses responsibly. May God be gracious to us and bless us, and make his face shine upon us. That your ways may be known on earth, your salvation among all nations. May the peoples praise you, O God. May all the peoples praise you. May the nations be glad and sing for joy. For you rule the peoples justly and guide the nations of the earth. May the peoples praise you, O God. May all the peoples praise you. Then the land will yield its harvest, and God, our God, will bless us. God will bless us, and all the ends of the earth will fear him. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Heavenly Father, God of all grace, govern our hearts that we may never forget your blessings, but steadfastly thank and praise you for all your goodness in this life, until with all your saints, we praise you eternally in your heavenly kingdom. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. So the Lord your God disciplines you. 
Observe the commands of the Lord your God, walking in his ways and revering him. For the Lord your God is bringing you into a good land, a land with streams and pools of water, with springs flowing in the valleys and hills, a land with wheat and barley, vines and fig trees, pomegranates, olive oil and honey, a land where bread will not be scarce, and you will lack nothing, a land where the rocks are iron, and you can dig copper out of the hills. When you have eaten and are satisfied, praise the Lord your God for the good land he has given you. The epistle lesson is found in 1 Timothy, the second chapter, it begins with verse 1. As Christians, he is explaining to us, that is, Timothy, Paul to Timothy and to each of us, that being thankful is a gift of faith. In focusing our minds and hearts on being thankful instead of upset, changes everything, especially those around us, because they like being around us. And it's a really a great gift that we have as Christians to be able to share this truth. He says it this way. First of all, I urge that entreaties and prayers, petitions and thanksgivings be made on behalf of all men, for kings and all who are in authority, in order that, that we may lead a tranquil and peace and quiet life in all godliness and dignity. This is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who desires all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth.
The Israelites were given throughout the history of their existence this remarkable gift of a God who showed himself in their presence, who did miraculous things in their lives, and over and over again enriched them because simply they were his chosen people. They didn't earn it. They didn't do anything to merit it. God just simply in his grace offered it. So when the nine lepers, who happened to be Israelites, and the tenth was a Samaritan, because it shows a unique thing. When you are really sick and you are outcast in society, everyone who's outcast becomes a group because a good Jew would never be seen with a Samaritan. Unless, of course, you had leprosy. So then they were together. And they all cried out together to the Lord. They were equal. They were saying, have mercy on us. And Jesus goes, just go show yourselves to the priest and you're good. And so as they were walking, they were all healed. And I don't know what it's like to have leprosy. I don't know what it's like to endure that. I don't know what it's like to be taken by society and shoved away and be treated as if you are not a human being. I have no idea how to deal, how they dealt with the pain because they did not have any kind of painkillers. And as they were leaving, as they were going to the temple, the Lord removed it all. He removed the shame, he removed the pain, he replaced their fingers, he restored their faces, he returned their toes to them. They were given a healthy body and life back. We are told that there was just one that came back. He, he, was, he was a Samaritan, and he said, thank you. And he said, thank you in the most humble of ways. Reflecting that, he understood the tremendous blessing the Father had showered upon him. Being thankful is a gift of faith. Because being faithful doesn't mean you just thankful. It doesn't mean you just simply say the word. It means from your heart you understand who you are before God but much more importantly who He is before you. He is the loving, merciful, gracious God who provides to us an abundance of blessings always by His grace. Thankfulness is an action of grace. One who is thankful. If a person has been given the right by God through his spirit to understand thankfulness, that person is humble in heart, has a humility given to them so that they truly recognize the gifts that are being given, that they understand that what they received was an action of God by His grace, not that they deserved it, but because He was such a loving God, He wanted to envelop them in a love that was truly divine, not human. And so if you are given the gift of truly being thankful, you look at life differently. You see a goodness in all the craziness of the world. You have an understanding that is truly unique to the Christian world. Thankfulness comes when we recognize, when we individually in our faith recognize how boldly God is in all that he does to bless us, to carry us through the hardships, to make us aware of what a remarkable love he has for each and every one of us. I love how God works because every time he shows us there is an abundance of reasons why we should be saying thank you. Because every day, He has made it so that we are forgiven. That He walks beside us. That He enables us to recognize good. That we have the ability to know that we can offer other people goodness as well. And that we have been bound to each other and bound to Him because that is what it means to be the body of Christ. We have such a menagerie of gifts given to us every day, naturally, without any doing anything, that gives us this hope, and more importantly, this assurance of the love of our God. Tomorrow, I am going to go to Jenny's, 
We're going to see some grandbabies. Now, I would love it if I could go and have a gathering with all four of my kids and all 11 of my grandkids. I would love it if at the same time I had my brothers and their wives and all my cousins, which I love deeply. But tomorrow, it's going to be me and Jenny, seven grandbabies, no, oh, six, because I think Frank is a couple. But then Scott and his mom. And it's going to be a remarkable day. You know why? We are all bound together in one remarkable thing called the love of Christ. I could be upset because I couldn't be with all four of my kids. I could say, this is just ridiculous. I can't even believe it. They don't come to see me. Well, that's just stupid. I'm going to enjoy what God gives me a right to understand how blessed I really am. I'm going to spend time with my kids and grandkids. This is an amazing gift. Every time it happens, it reflects the fact of how gracious God is. They're still alive. And I can't stress that enough. I remember when my brother Phil died. I remember how it changed everything. I remember the pain and the, and the hurt that we all had anytime we gathered together because that little, well, my little brother that was this tall, he wasn't there. My kids may not be there physically, but they're alive. My grandbabies are all alive. How much can I ever not be thankful, regardless of how much time I always going to spend with them together, how can I not be thankful for what God has done? That's why when we understand the blessings of God and the thankfulness of God, God gives us a right to view life each day by looking at it this way. When we see one thing good in a day, it's a good day. We don't need 14 things good. We don't need 23 things good. We don't need 914 things good. We need one. Because every time you get out of bed, your feet hit the floor, it's a good day. Because hitting your feet hitting the floor is a good thing. Even when your hip is in pain. It's a really good day. And when God gives us a right to understand how blessed we are, we can be joyful every single day of our life because that is the promise that he gives to us. And as Christians, it is the witness that we give to the world and especially to each other. How can we not be thankful for being able to wake up and live each day knowing we have a Savior who is not only walking with us, but is holding on to us, protecting us, enriching us, blessing us, and guiding us every single day? I don't care what the world does. This is what Laura always says, I don't care what the world does. The only thing that matters is what you and I do together. And what it is, is we live each day together. We are blessed with being bound to our Lord and able to see good things. That's why thankfulness truly is a gift of the Spirit. For it changes how we view our life naturally, which is always saying what's wrong, and being able to focus on the wonder of what is right. And what is right is that we are bound to Him. We have a relationship with Him. And we are forgiven. And when we die, we live. That's why this blessing of Thanksgiving is a time when we are reminded of just the menagerie of gifts that we have. Tomorrow, one of the gifts I have, I'm, I'm going to cook a turkey. And by the way, I am not guaranteeing that it's going to be any good. <laughs> I'm going to cook a ham as well because Scott has to have ham because he can't stand turkey. And then I'm making my green beans because that's about the extent of my abilities. <laughs> and I don't eat potatoes anymore, so I, I can't make mashed potatoes. That's Jenny's point. But I am blessed with cooking food for people I love. And then we're going to share a meal, but share a whole lot more. We're going to share this bond that God gave us out of his love and grace. And we're going to smile together and laugh. And get closer than six foot together. Because we're family. We don't do it with the people outside of family, but family. Can you miss not, I mean, can you just imagine not hugging your grandkids? I love my grandkids, they just crack me up. That's how blessed I am. That's how blessed we are. We understand goodness, we recognize goodness, we have 
a menagerie of it given around and we understand that when one thing is good in our life, all things are good in our life. And the thing that never changes is always good for us is our relationship with our Savior. That is why when Jesus healed the nine Israelites, he was so disappointed because their Savior had come to them and they didn't even recognize him when he healed them. Only a person outside of Israel recognized him. We are given the gift of recognizing our Lord. And that's why as Christians, we have the right to be thankful each day. May God in his mercy and his wonder of his grace lead us to truly touch many others with the joy that we have. Amen. Would you please rise? Let us pray. Gracious Father, we once again are given the privilege of calling upon your name. Because you are our God who not only hears us, but provides us your comfort and goodness. And for help on this night, dear Lord, we ask your special blessing. You alone can carry her through. You alone can provide her your comfort. You alone can touch her with the promise of the resurrection and provide her that peace of heart and mind. We are truly thankful, dear Lord, that you are our God, who is so personal in our lives. And when we gather together on Saturday, you will be with us to provide what we cannot provide, which is the power and blessing and comfort of your spirit. So truly, dear Lord, for all who love can, be with them, enrich and bless them, and provide that special presence that comes from you alone. We also this night, dear Lord, once again bring to you Vicky. Vicky is continuing to struggle. She is retaining more water. Things are just not very comfortable for her. So we ask that you would be with her and provide your goodness of water. And as your people this night, dear Lord, once again, we are humbled to give you thanks, to ask your blessing upon our families, to ask your blessing upon our country, to allow all the gatherings that are taking place to be safe and secure, and that we together will humble ourselves before you and give praise to your name. So we thank you, gracious Father, for the opportunity to be reminded of how blessed we are. And we ask that that richness would truly touch us all. And as your people, we turn to you this night once again in the prayer that your Son has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated.
praise this Lord, we give you thanks for the day, especially for the good we were permitted to give and to receive. The day is now past, and we commit it to you. We entrust to you the night and rest in your peace, for you are our help, and you neither slumber nor sleep. Hear us for the sake of your name. Amen. Amen. Give, take, give thanks to the Lord. For he is good. His mercy endures forever. He is gracious and merciful. Give thanks to the Lord our God. His love is everlasting. He extends to us his grace. He provides us with his forgiveness. Give thanks to the Lord. He is our everlasting God. His love is never ending. He is our God forever. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and grant to you his eternal peace. Amen.